This episode of Art Zone is brought to you by... Cheese. It's good for you. Eat some today. Hi there and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy here at the beloved Georgetown Stables and we have an outstanding lineup of art for you. Take a look. I really think what I'm capturing is joy. Immersive photography. I'm in my joy while I'm doing it as well. Weird video. It's not all, you know, go-go girls and gorillas and psychedelics. Uh. <laughs> oh, really? Modern dance. A lively calendar. and the soulful sounds of Whitney Manger. We'll begin with Lisa Petrucci, a pop artist and the owner of a locally based film distribution company with a decidedly unique bent. Something weird. When I was younger, I said to myself, I would really just like to have a career where I'm able to combine my love of film and art and popular culture, and never really knew what that job would be until I started working at Something Weird Video, and I feel really fortunate and blessed to be able to be doing what I do. Are you kids make me sick? Something Weird Video is a nostalgic vintage mail order company that specializes in exploitation films from the 1930s through the 1970s. A lot of the films that, that we have were popular in drive-ins and grindhouses from mid-century through the early 70s. Probably one of the best known is Blood Feast. The crowd would gather at the temple for the great feast. Confessions of a Psycho Cat. Oh, really? Bad Girls Go to Hell. I didn't they're about as low budget as low gets. The ship collided with a planetarian rocket. The company was started in 1990 by my late husband, Mike Farini, when he discovered what a VCR was and that he could actually record movies off television. The first titles that were out on home video were all bootlegs. By the late 1980s, he got the idea to actually try to find films that hadn't been released on home video. So he came into a cache of films up in Everett, which were mostly adult movies for the time period of the 1950s, like Girly Loops and a couple of exploitation feature films, and he released those on home video. That's interesting. Back in uh, August of 2012, Mike had been sick for a few months. So we went to the doctors and he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. I think he never really thought he was going to die, but he did. They gave him a year and a half to two years. He died in a year and a half. During that time, we talked about what was going to happen with something weird. And you know, he's just like, well, just shut it down, you know, sell it and go off and do your own thing. But after he was gone and I just realized that I couldn't do that. It was just way too important to like keep his legacy alive. A lot of what I do on a daily basis is ship DVDs. So uh, these are orders that are going out to needy customers who are eager to get some DVDs in the mail. You know, Something Weird Video is basically a mail order company. We're making DVDs and we're shipping DVDs. That's the brunt of it for the most part. Cutting the covers by hand is about as lo-fi as it gets here. I've had people say, oh, I'd love to work for Something Weird. It's not all you know, go-go girls and gorillas and psychedelics. Uh, it's, it's just drudgery for the most part. But then I realized, well, other people don't think that. They, they think it's pretty great, so I, I should count my blessings. Tell me something about yourself. I come from a little town in Ohio. Yes, 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 I understand. In addition to running something weird, I'm also a pop artist. I haven't been working on my art for a few years because obviously I've been focused on this. 
My art is definitely inspired by Something Weird video and all of the stuff that Mike and I collected over the years. They're very much symbiotic. Well, this is where the magic used to happen. I would do my paintings in this room, and these are a few from the last couple of years. And over the past decade, I had some other things come out, like these dolls, and I published a book through Dark Horse Comics. Now that's what I call art. And one of the cool projects that we recently did was an actual record album. So this is actually, in my opinion, this is the best side of the record that we're listening to right now. It's side A. Thanks so much for coming tonight. Something weird. Greatest hits record release party. We dug deep into the film vault to pick some of our favorite songs for this record. The liner notes are super fun. I mean, there's a lot of really interesting information in there and wait. stuff. I guess what I'm most proud of is that I've been able to keep Mike's vision alive. And when it comes down to it, that's the most important thing. I mean, if it wasn't for all of the hard work and joy and determination that Mike had over the years, none of this would exist. So I'm just gonna do my best to keep things going for as long as I can. Oh, but it couldn't have been one of the kids, Lieutenant. Learn more about Lisa and about Something Weird video at somethingweird.com. In 2018, I stumbled upon an extraordinary exhibit of photography, and when I found out that the artist lived local, I said, we gotta get her on Art Zone, and we have got her, and here she is, Deb Ochak, everybody! Yay! <laughs> Thank you, I'm Nancy. so glad you're here. Okay, so the exhibit that I saw, it featured uh, warm weather beach and water photos. And what grabbed me was how visceral they were. I could, I could feel the heat. I could feel the water. I felt like I was there. And that really is due in part to um, the way you shoot. And it's a process that you call aquatic street photography. That's right. Is that right? So that's a really intriguing phrase. So unpack that for me. What does that mean? I put my camera in a housing mm -hmm. and I go to crowded beaches. And a housing is something like a... A waterproof housing where I can uh, manipulate my camera and do all the things I need to do, but bring a beautiful camera with beautiful lenses into the water. Got it. And I frequent crowded, colorful public beaches mm -hmm. and capture people having joy, experiencing the water from the vantage point of the water, mm -hmm. using all the techniques that street photographers use, mm -hmm. but I'm actually swimming while I capture the images. So do you, do you not, you, you want them to know you're taking the photo, you don't want them to know? I mean, you said you can get close, how, how close? As close as possible, really. Mm -hmm. um, but I prefer, I prefer, my style is that people not know I'm there. Right. And when I say close, I mean uh, my photograph, the selfie that was shot in Positano, I've got subjects really, really close to the camera and then the entire city of Positano, you know, in the background mm -hmm. of the photo. Mm -hmm. uh, when, since you're not holding the camera up to your eye, mm -hmm. how do you compose the, the shot? I do, I do a lot of holding it up to my eye to compose, okay. to kind of understand what's in the frame right. and what I'm seeing. Of course, I'm reading the light and you know all of the things that are important for composition. But then often I try and hold the camera a little bit lower. That's my that thought. relaxes people mm -hmm. a little bit. It's down here, they're not as uncomfortable. As soon as you raise a camera to your eyes, people become very alert. And they freeze so, up too. Yeah. And I, I just love the imagery of holding it at my heart. Mm. Because this is not, I'm not, um, this isn't satire. I'm not trying to make people mm. look foolish. Mm -hmm. I really love my subjects, mm -hmm. and so the idea of sort of shooting from the heart, I really like that. Can you tell when you have got the shot, when it's like, oh, boom, I, I nailed it? Yeah. You can. How, yeah. do, you, how do you know? I, you just, well, I'm seeing through my viewfinder what I'm capturing, mm -hmm. and by the light that day, the clouds, the scenery, the colors, mm -hmm. we just have, you know, an intuition about these things. Right, you just have the eye. Yeah. So I feel a, a real emotional difference between the shots with uh, with people in them mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and then um, more the nature, purely nature. Do you know what I mean by that? There's a difference emotionally, and how would you, if you do, how would you describe that? So you're referring uh, the difference between ebb and flow and the yes. aquatic street, completely yes. different. Yeah. But interestingly, almost always taken in the same location. Right. So one is I'm, I'm pointing the camera towards the water mm -hmm. and capturing the water's movement and that interplay between the, the surface of the water and my camera lens. Mm -hmm. And the way that moves, that's something I can't control, mm -hmm. which I love. Mm -hmm. I love that element of surprise. Mm -hmm. And those are meant to be really an intimate experience for the viewer. They're a very intimate experience for me. And I want the, the viewer to feel that they're submerged by the water. In it. In it. Right, right. In the water. Right. And to see all the little subtle nuances of the surface of the water, um, I'm just really fascinated by that. So yes, that has a completely different feel than when I turn the camera back towards the beach yes. and swim in closer to people mm -hmm. and capture them having fun. And what are you trying to capture with the people? Joy. Joy. I think at the root of my work, is joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's something about the way people interact in the water. They're all there to relax, to play. It's such a beautiful experience that I really think what I'm capturing is joy. I'm in my joy while I'm doing it mm. as well. You grew up in the water as well, right? You yeah. have a love of the beach, a yes. love of being in the ocean or lake or whatever. Yeah. All of this I, I didn't realize at first, but upon reflection is, is such a um, a nod to my childhood, where mm. we would spend our summers in crowded, colorful, public beaches. Mm -hmm. I grew up in New Hampshire, always within an hour of the water. This is how we recreated as a family. Mm -hmm. This is how we spent time together. Um, and those memories are really beautiful to me. They were mostly spent with my mother and my, my two brothers mm -hmm. at the beach. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's so interesting that then motherhood brought me back to that experience. It so it's sort of bridging my childhood and then my life as a mother too. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, your, your, your photos, they're, to me they're nostalgic and there's a yearning quality. Uh, that picture of kids swimming, and I think it's called the queue, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, it's sweet and sad to me at the same time. And, and so when you create a photo, is there, is there a particular thing, or also joy, but is there something else you're trying to communicate to people or to the world? Does that make sense? Oh, it, it does. So that's an interesting photograph because I wasn't intending to get that one, and that's one of those lucky, oh. amazing experiences that street photographers have. Yeah. I went to Black Rock that day because I was intending to shoot the jumpers as they went into the water. Mm -hmm. I'd kind of missed a great opportunity the year prior, and when I went back, I, I had a little bit of an agenda about getting that shot. Yeah. But my son was climbing up on that rock with those kids, and oh. he was a little bit anxious. Uh -huh. And so that's me being a mom. I was in that position but I could see through my viewfinder that I had something really special. Wow. And that was that lineup of people marching from one corner of the frame all the way Underwater, up to the top. Up Underwater, up above the water, yeah. And there's something about suspension in water. I think average bodies, normal bodies, just look so poetic and yeah. so beautiful in the water. These aren't models, these mm -hmm. are everyday people and mm -hmm. everyone just looks so held by the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People have often said um, water is the ultimate surrender, but where I happen to shoot, I think it's the ultimate engagement. People mm -hmm. are really engaged with the water. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a future goal of something you want to shoot or a subject you want to shoot that's looming out there? You know. I'm committed to traveling the world mm -hmm. and capturing beach culture nice. in as many different places as possible. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the work and reflecting on those themes mm -hmm. and what emerges. I wanna capture what's unique about each place, but also what's similar mm -hmm. about each place. Mm -hmm. So that, that work is definitely continuing. And then ebb and flow as well, those subtle nuances in the water yeah. wherever I go. Yeah. It's like you're constantly just finding those little changes, those yeah. little details. Yeah. Well, I adore your work, um, and there's lots of places for you to see Deb's work. Um, she has a current a solo show, Culture and Sea. It's up through March 31st at Blink UX Research and Design on Western Avenue near Coleman Ferry Dock. Uh, Deb is also represented by Winston Walker Gallery on Dexter Avenue, and of course she has a website where you can see all of her photos and her beautiful short films at debochockphotography.com. Well, thank you so much, Deb. I'm so glad you came by, and thank I love you. I, I love your work. You're doing good things in the world. Thank you so much, Nancy.
The filmmaker and choreographer of Screams of Sammamish is Emma Lai, a sophomore and a dance major at Cornish College of the Arts. Our musical guest this week is the supremely talented Whitney Manger. Hello, girl. Hello. Hello. And who's this wonderful talent right here? This is Skylar Michal. Skylar, it's so good to have you on the show too. Um, so you, well, you're quite the phenom. We have a lot of you have a lot of fans here in this room, actually. Um, and you cut your teeth musically busking at the Pike Place Market. That's right. Whether you what did you learn about performing by playing on the street like that? Uh. Don't be afraid. Ah. Yeah, you can't really be afraid out there. Mm -hmm. It's not for the weak of heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taught me to sing a little bit more loudly, more raw. Yeah. Gave me some of my chops on my guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Did you make money? Yeah, I did it for about 10 years. I'd nice. like to think I was able to pay my rent right every on. time because of it. <laughs> um, I love what Jake Udi, Udi Jake Udi, KEXP, he describes your sound this way. Whitney Manger's voice cracks, crumbles, aches, and breaks your heart. It's one made of 100-year-old salvaged Northwest wood, complete with embossed grains, nicks, and honest imperfections. That's a fabulous paragraph. Does that resonate for you, a 100-year-old salvaged piece of Northwest timber? Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, that was a really cool write-up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I felt like I was received well. Mm -hmm. He kind of got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you put out four records since 2011. Let's see, Heartbeat. Steadfast, mm -hmm. Stone, and then last year in 2018, it was Carry On. Correct. Right? Yeah. Has your songwriting evolved or changed over that chunk of time? Um, yes and no. I feel like I've always been the kind of songwriter that attacks music mm -hmm. in a way of uh, how do other people write music? I'm, I love music. I listen to a lot of music, even more so than I play it, hmm. which is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I take from a lot of my favorite artists and even local artists and kind of use that as a way to write my songs. I would say I've gotten a little more uh, efficient as huh. far as writing. I'm a little more intentional about my songs mm -hmm. and less like about I need to feel this pain or ache in order in to order write to create some, this. Yeah, right. I'm becoming more of a writer that really just this is what I want to write about and just get into it and just write about it. Dig. Yeah. Is it lyric usually that starts it or is it a melody or different? Uh, it's typically a melody, but yeah. you know, I have a lot of books of songs that have never really met a melody, so I yeah. don't know, maybe there's a song for those, but uh, yeah. most of the time it's a melody that kind of pulls in a story for me. Yeah. Well, we're so pleased that you're here, you too, Skylar, mm -hmm. and so you're going to play us a couple songs off of Carry On, and I believe first up is Be Mine? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Are you ready to do this thing? Let's do it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Wendy Manger and Skylar Mihal. One, two, three, and all right, yeah. Do you want to get high? Do you want to get low? Do you want some, some, something to fit that hole? You're looking for loving, but I got you. You're looking for some, some, something, something. Call upon me, baby. Yeah, just about any time. So, baby, 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 baby you'll say that you'll be mine. I got sugar in my body, I got sugar in my soul. But the first I ever saw you was the first I ever known that it was love. Yes, it was. You know it's true. Can't stop thinking about you. You can't call upon me, baby. Yeah, just about any time. So, baby, 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 you say that you'll be mine. Talk to me now. Down to the core 
Tonight is the night I say what I never said before. I think I love you. I think I do. I think I love, 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 love you. I think I love you. I think I do. I think I love, 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 love you. I think I love you. I think I do. I think I'm so, so, so in love with you. I think I love you. I think I do. I think I'm so, so, so in love with you. Wow! And oh, yeah. And all right. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to get high? Do you want to get low? Say that you be mine. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Download Whitney's latest EP, Carry On, from your favorite online platform and see her live at the Fawcett Hotel in Tacoma on March 8th and at the W Hotel in Seattle on March 22nd. I'm Angie Louise, and I am curating this week's calendar of events. Let's start off by bringing the heat to winter with a unique festival of music, dance, and celebration. The Brazilian Carnival 25th anniversary Let's Celebrate is the longest running Brazilian Carnival celebration in the Pacific Northwest. Enjoy the sounds of beloved Show Brazil, internationally recognized and well known throughout the Northwest for events such as Bumbershoot and Brazil Fest. Take in all the fun on Saturday, March 9th at the Crocodile. If you're already looking ahead to spring, the Northwest Flower and Garden Festival could be the perfect place to get an early fix. This year's theme is Gardens of the World and will feature 20 spectacular gardens from the region's top designers. The five-day festival packs it in with seminars, displays, workshops, and contests. Enjoy the florals and greenery February 20th through the 24th at the Washington State Convention Center. Now, something for the kids. SIF Cinema is hosting a day-long filmmaking workshop to celebrate the closing weekend of Marvel Universe of Superheroes at Mopop. Kids ages 9 to 12 will receive hands-on experience in creating their own super film with help from professionals in less than eight hours. So gather those aspiring mini movie buffs and sign them up for the fun. It all happens Saturday, March 2nd. And I am so excited to tell you about my show. Opening night of March is Cabaret Month Festival at the Triple Door. This great night of music features four uniquely theatrical acts. Lift a glass to original songs of love and revolution from my Weimar Berlin-inspired band, The Love Markets. Treat yourself to diva delights from drag chanteuse and festival founder Arnaldo. And groove to infectious harmony and rhythm with the sirens of swing and sweet spot combo. Learn more about the festival at marchcabaret.com. So come on down and join me in the love markets at the magical Triple Door, February 27th. We'll be in the world of our dreams. Thanks, Angie. And I'm gonna add one more item to the calendar. American Junkie, a memoir by local author Tom Hansen, is set in Seattle's grunge era music scene and it tells the story of Tom's devastating heroin addiction and eventual recovery. Well, Book at Repertory Theater has adapted Tom's book into a stage play and is giving it a world premiere. I've never known how to do those things that people do. Those things that supposedly make life worth living. Don't feel sorry for me. I just had some bad luck is all. Sometimes that's all it takes. If you're sensitive, a few events at the wrong times. In your formative years, you can't cope and something breaks. 
dies inside you and you don't have the tools to fix it. American Junkie runs now through March 10th at Book It Repertory Theater, located in the lower level of the Seattle Center Armory. That is a wrap. Big thanks to Georgetown Stables for hosting us. And you can find out more about this place, including how to book your special event at georgetownstables.com. Well, thanks for tuning in. Have a great week. I'm